All right, Power Morphicon! How was your Saturday? So for those that don't know, my name is Kyle Higgins. I am the main series writer <laughs> of the mega Boom Studios hit Shattered Grid. And we're here today for a very, very special panel. Um, we had one change uh, before the panel, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Jason David Frank will not be able to join us. However, we have someone very, very exciting playing Tommy Oliver and Mr. Lord Draken. So we're here today to celebrate 25th anniversary of Power Rangers. However, with our 40-page double-sized one-shot finale coming out in two weeks, I am actually leaving the book. <laughs> so before that issue comes out, I thought it would be a lot of fun to do a bit of a recap for all of you so that you are properly primed for the mega finale that is going to blow your minds. But in order to do that, I'm going to need the help of a few friends. Michael, can you cue the music, please? First up, playing Jason Lee Scott and one of our Yellow Sentries, Mr. Peter Sidarso. Bringing Kimberly Hart to life, we have Megan Camarina. You know her from Megaforce, but today she'll be Lauren Sheba and Trini Kwan, Miss Sierra Hanna. The man of multiple voices for Power Rangers, playing today Doggy Kruger, Alpha 5, Mr. Kelson Henderson. Marcus Balkmeyer, uh, and a Red Century leader, Mr. Paul Schreier. My favorite skull, Mr. Jason Narvin. The wisest sage of Eltar, Mr. David Fielding as Zordon. For my money, the greatest wicked witch, Miss Barbara Goodson as Rita Repulsa. And for the first time in 25 years, Mr. Walter Jones as Zach Taylor. We're also going to be joined for a little last minute bonus uh, performance by Michael Sorich as Squat, Babu, and Goldar! And Tom Weiner as uh, Finster! And somebody else! That I'm now blanking <laughs> on. I love last minute edition! Woo! Anyone working the con? Can we get a couple more waters up here if you have them? Yeah! Woo! Honor! Hydration! It's here for hydration! Yay! No, anti-hydration. I knew you were a bunch of anti hydrists <laughs> And one more chair, please. There is a chair at the end. Great, can you bring it hold down over here? Over here. Mm -hmm. Or you can read it off of Jason's right there if you want to stay. Okay? So, first and foremost, I want to give a special shout out and thank you to a legend of Power Rangers. Um, he has created the sonic identity of some of your favorite shows and all that music you heard here today, a very special new remix that was MMPR, it brought in some SBD, Mr. Ron Wasserman. Ron, will you please stand up? Ron, grab a mic real quick. So Ron and I met. Ron, how did I? Oh! oh no! No, no, no! It's right here. 
<laughs> so, Ron, you and I met for the first time. How? Uh, you went in a bar in West Hollywood. Well, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> we met because of a very special collaboration. Um, you guys may have seen it. It was actually a collaboration between Ron, myself, and Jason David Frank. And it's that collaboration that is actually the start of our story today. We pump the volume, please. The world needs us, Rangers. One day the great responsibility of being the great ranger will fall to you. Take the world from evil. Stand by your allies. Never run from the battle. My mission is to bring you back. Ready? Let's rock it! Yeah! Silver! Black! Pink! Blue! Yellow! Yeah. Whatever we do, we have to do it together. Power down! Commander Kruger told me you're the best he has ever had. Till we meet again, power will be this apart. Destroy them! Up with do we still have shields? Engine staff, activate! Ready. ready! 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 So many rangers. So much potential. Squandered for so long. My lord, the generals are ready. They simply await your command. What's important to me now is my friendship with all of you. I don't ever want that to change. It won't, Tommy. You'll always be one of us. Then it's time to set things right. We will invade their worlds. We will tear down everything that might protect them. And then, when it's too late, when they're powerless and alone, they will realize the truth. They could have been gods. Tommy Oliver, but not the Tommy Oliver we know. In this alternate world, Tommy has become a despot, the ruler of the entire planet. He is Lord Draken. So how does that come to be? Well, in this world, like ours, Rita Repulsa did use her dark magic to put him under her control and turn him into the evil Green Ranger. And in this world, like ours, the Power Rangers were able to break that spell by destroying the Sword of Darkness. But although the spell was broken, this version of Tommy didn't accept the Power Rangers' extended hand of friendship. Instead, he ran from the Rangers, from Rita, from everyone. We open on the roof of a Tokyo skyscraper at dusk. Tommy, tired of running, throws his helmet down and sits on the edge of the roof, wiping tears from his eyes. I know you're hurting, child, but trust me, this has all been a valuable growing experience. If we choose to look at it that way. Tommy turns as Rita appears behind him. You. It's good to see you again, Tommy. Is that what you think? Of course it is. And you should too. You made me do terrible, terrible things. You manipulated me. Oh. The spell was unfortunate, yes. However, there wasn't much time to get you acclimated. This is a war to remake the world, Tommy. And to put it on Earth's terms, I've just given you an atomic bomb. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want anything to do with you. You don't know what you want. Which is why you're jumping from city to city, moping by yourself. Don't think I haven't noticed. Each place you've been has been somewhere you spent time growing up. <laughs> you've seen hard times, child. You understand just how cruel the world can be. That's what makes you strong. 
That's something the others will never truly know. You know, I'm reminded of another young man I once saw greatness in. It was a different time, many, many years ago, on the 46th planet in the Toki system. His name was Draken. He didn't think he was ready either. But I knew he was wrong. And when we pushed him into action, he proved just how worthy and fantastic he was. He helped me conquer the planet. He brought peace to the system, a peace that still stands today, long after his death. She leans in, going for the hard sell. The world doesn't need multiple leaders. It needs one. It doesn't need multiple rangers. It needs one. You were my choice, and you always will be. We can do great things together, Tommy, if you're open to it. Dragon. You like that name? The one ranger should have a name that befits him, shouldn't he? Oh, I couldn't agree more. And with that, Rita and Tommy teleport away. Moments before Jason and Zack arrive, having traced Tommy's energy signature, they look around, but there's no sign of him. Anything? No. Nope. We gotta find him for Rita. Otherwise, who knows what might happen. In the years that followed, Rita Repulsa groomed Tommy, now going by the title of Lord Draken, as they slowly but surely conquered the world side by side. On one fateful day, Rita and Draken led their forces in an all-out assault on the command center. They lo- the, on that day, the Power Rangers fell. They lost Jason, they lost Billy, they lost Zordon, they lost their home and their powers. They lost everything. In the aftermath of the battle, we open on the rooftop of the destroyed command center. <clears throat> Draken stands, looking out at all that he's conquered. Rita approaches from behind. Zordon is gone. The rangers and their last stand have been crushed. (laughs) This is a big day, Lord Draken. You've made me very proud. Thank you. You don't seem pleased. I I had a lot in my mind. Well, tell me, child, what troubles you? Zordon chose children for a reason. Their hope, their optimism but also their naivety, their ability to be controlled. Draken steps towards Rita, moving in close. Eventually, though, every child realizes the truth, that their parents, for all their strengths, are incredibly flawed, that they have feet of clay, that in many ways they hold us back. Eventually, every child realizes they must grow up. What are you? Rita looks down to see the dragon dagger buried in her chest. Oh, Im- I- impossible. Oh. You gave me these powers, Empress. It's only fitting they be your end. Rest now. Your time is done. Draken reaches down and picks up the dragon dagger, as well as Rita's staff. He stands and turns, looking out over his new kingdom. I will continue what we have started. And continue, he did. (laughs) Using the power coins he stole from the rangers, he created a new army of ranger sentries who paved the way for Lord Draken's kingdom to conquer and flourish. But while there were no more rangers, there were survivors who refused to submit. There was a resistance. We open looking through the eyes of green-hued binoculars out across Draken's Angel Grove. Two giant statues of Rita Repulsa and the Green Ranger tower over what's left of the downtown skyline. How's Zone 1? All clear, though Rita seems slightly shorter today. Zone 2? Recon is reconning. I've got four trunks, peacekeeper formation. Zone 3's active. Two kitties on contraband. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not going to put that in the report. Trina gets upset. 
Zone 5 is very secure. Why don't we have a Zone 4 again? Draken blew it up. And Zone 6? Looks like they've doubled the putties on the east wall. Man. You know, I used to hate that place. Now I'd give just about anything to go back to high school. We now see who is looking through the scope binoculars. It's Kimberly, on the roof of a high, bombed-out building, as Bulk watches her back. Yeah, I used to think life was tough, but I didn't know what problems were. <laughs> you remember that awful lunch we had every day? God, I loved whatever those chicken nugget things were. <laughs> Terrorizing freshmen, sleeping through detention. Long hair, bright clothes, hanging at Ernie's. You know what I miss the most, though? Mr. Todd's history class. What? You slept through that one, too, didn't you? Wait, are you kidding? I love that stuff! The Crimean War! Barton Mitchell! Man, history's the best. Really? Wow. I never would have guessed. Crazy. You were a history buff pretending to be a big dumb bully. And you... <laughs> We're a spoiled valley girl who was actually a power ranger. <laughs> Weren't secret lives fun? Look, I know it's a little late, but... Thanks, Kim. For? For all the times you probably saved the world and no one knew about it. I'm guessing it was a bunch. Yeah, well... We didn't do it when it mattered. Hey. Paul puts his hand on Kim's shoulder. Come on, don't do that. Come on, back in school, I would have given anything to be a Power Ranger. Anything. Superpowers, a secret identity, drive around a big metal lizard. <laughs> sure, the world had to go to hell for me to finally team up with the Pink Ranger, but, but I'm here. And you're here. And I'm telling you, we're never going to stop fighting. I'm going to have a special round of applause for Ryan Parrott. One of my favorite scenes in all of Shattered Grid is from Go Go issue 10 or 11, Mr. Ryan Parrott. <laughs> so that's Draken's world, a place with few heroes and little hope. But our world is different. See, before Rita kidnapped Tommy Oliver, she tried something else, a different method. A method that started with the abduction of Zach Taylor. We open on Zack as he slowly regains consciousness. Looking around, he realizes where he is. Rita's prison, the dark dimension. He looks down at his hands, shackled. Oh, man. Suddenly, from the mist, Rita approaches. I'm sorry about the ambush, Zack, but you have my word. I come in peace. Yeah, somehow I doubt that. His shackles disappear. No, no, no tricks. If you check, you'll see you still have your power coin. Of course, uh, you can leave at any time. But if you're at all interested in what I have to say... What is this? I just want to talk. I was impressed by how you handled things in Italy, Zach. And I wanted to congratulate you personally. After all, you're the real reason the Rangers won today. It was a team effort. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but you were the one piloting the Megazord when Jason decided to run off to be a glory hound. Without you, my Da Vinci monster would have stomped on him and the Prime Minister. Yes. You know, I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. Why don't you let me show you something? Rita opens a portal in the mist. <laughs> Unless, of course, you don't think you can handle it. <sighs> Zack scoffs before he follows Rita through the portal into a strange new place. This is... My palace. Well, part of it anyway. 
When you're trapped in a dumpster for 10,000 years, you come to appreciate open floor plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm supposed to feel sorry for you? <laughs> they pass another room. It's Babu and Squats. Inside, they're fighting over a toy. Babu! It's mine! Come on! Let go! <laughs> Them. Look, I don't want all this destruction and bad blood between us, Zack. But Zordon has given me much nothing of a choice. Without even looking, Rita uses her staff to zap the object Babu and Squat are fighting over, incinerating it. Yo! Oh. <laughs> That's kind of his thing. I mean... He doesn't really give people choices. Goldar joins Rita. You're the ones who started attacking our world with giant monsters. What choice was there? My Empress didn't start making them big until Zordon got Zords. You don't know the whole story. That's a lie. <laughs> they arrive don't start doing me. <laughs> they arrive in Rita's main room, where her throne and orbs sit. All I'm trying to say is that I believe people need to reach their true potential. Under my leadership, that can happen. Earth can thrive. Yeah, I'm not sure thrive means what you think it means. Oh, just look at your world as it exists now. Is it really that great of a place? In the orb, Zack sees the fallout of the recent battle. And that's to say nothing of the aftermath of our skirmishes. But we can make it stop. We can solve this world's problems. I think you can be more, Zack. You should be more. Rita begins conjuring something. And on my team, you can be. She holds up the object, the dragon coin. I know what it's like to be a second in command who has what it takes to be lead. You and I are kindred spirits. And make no mistake, that's what I'm offering here. A chance to lead us to a better world. In the orb, Zack sees a green ranger standing in front of a cheering crowd. He takes off the helmet, revealing it's Zack. There's a place for rangers helping the people of Earth, Zack. I've never believed otherwise. But it should be the right ranger with the right guidance. And the catch is? No catch. Uh, well... <laughs> Except that the dragon coin brings with it unbelievable power, and in order to fuel you with it, you have to first part with your powers willingly. And you want me to turn against Zordon and my friends? Um, well, uh... <laughs> Once we secure the world, your friends will see that you did this to help them. They'll understand, Zack, and that you did it for the good of everyone. Zack look back, looks back at the image of the cheering crowd, and then looks down at his own morpher, with the Mastodon coin sitting inside it, framed by the words, Power Rangers. You're right. We should be doing more. Goldar approaches to take Zack's Mastodon coin and give him the much more powerful dragon coin. Uh, very smart, Zack. You're making the right choice. Yeah. I know. Zack surprises Goldar with a punch, knocking the dragon coin out of his hands. Oh, you ungrateful brat! Zack catches it, but Rita uses her staff to electrocute him. <laughs> the coin falls. Ah! You have no idea what you're turning down! Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm good. Destroy him! Goldar grabs Zack, but Zack knocks him back and uses his communicator to teleport out of Rita's palace and back to safety.
Of course, the consequence of Zack refusing Rita's offer meant that she would go on to kidnap Tommy Oliver and force him to become her Green Ranger. <clears throat> See, in our world, when the Rangers broke the spell that was cast over him, Tommy did accept their offer to join the team. But that doesn't mean the team was a cohesive unit right away. Actually, it was an attack from a mysterious new foe called the Black Dragon that led to the command center being invaded, Zordon being lost, and a very narrow Ranger escape. The new team was facing its most strenuous test yet. We open with the Rangers having retreated from the command center to the pocket dimension, a place outside of space and time. That was... I don't even know how to describe what just happened. It was like someone was peeling my skin off with a knife. I've never... I didn't know our powers could be separated like that. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Just rattled. Where's Billy? They all share a look. Oh no. He knocked me free. Right before we started teleporting. Did he make it clear? I thought so. Did he or didn't he? I thought he did. I don't know. Jason, we gotta go back before they- Jason uses his hands to channel the energy of the pocket dimension to create a viewing screen. An army of putties march on the command center. They're already there. <sighs> Great. This is just, uh, We lost Zordon and Alpha. There's some dragon who can turn us inside out and now he's got the command center and the one who might be able to figure out what the hell's going on. Tommy, in all the stuff you've seen from Rita, the time you were with her, the hallucinations, all of it. Is there anything that might tell us what she's planning, or what this black dragon actually is? Scorpina said the crystal charged on green chaos energy. And that's what opened the portal? Yeah. So, this dragon thing is tied to you somehow? Somehow. But you have no idea how? No, Zach, I don't. Oh my god. If you guys don't chill out, somebody's gonna slip on all this testosterone and break their neck. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be a team. We're supposed to be friends. And one of our friends is in trouble. So why don't we focus on how we get him back, rather than everybody throwing shade, hmm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trini walks over to Jason, who's still looking at the destroyed command center. Billy, Alpha, Zordon, we've never had to... I, I mean, this is as bad as anything Rita's pulled off before. I know. How are we going to get them back? Saving Billy, Alpha, and Zordon took a coordinated plan, a lot of bravery, and a journey across worlds. It also revealed that the man piloting the Black Dragon was Lord Draken. His plan? To start an invasion of our world, having already conquered his own. Lord Draken was eventually captured, but he subsequently escaped. And while the team nervously waited for his inevitable return, Tommy and Kim decided, decided to enjoy the quiet time as best they could by going on the first date. Uh, <laughs> that was a very knowing hush that fell on the crowd. We open at night in downtown Angel Grove as Kim and Tommy leave an old movie theater. Okay, but like, it was totally different. It was a totally different movie than what I was expecting. Neon Speed, about as Hollywood cliché as you can get. Hey, sometimes it's nice to watch other people save the world. And all things considered. It might be weirdly topical. Maybe. I know it's weird to try and have fun with everything else that's going on. A little. But we're going to beat him, Tommy. At whatever his game is. I truly believe that. I do too. Anyway, I had fun. It was a good first date, for sure. He leans in to kiss her. <gasps> uh, oh, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. No, no, it's, uh, I just, I don't know, just, <laughs> I, I kind of want to go slow, if that's cool. Are you kidding? Totally. Can we maybe do something again sometime? Definitely. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. They head off in opposite directions. But as Kim rounds the corner, she starts to second guess. Stupid. That was so stupid. I should have kissed him. I wanted to kiss him. Walking down an alley, Tommy shakes his head as well. Awkward, Oliver. Why rush that? You so didn't have to. I want to kiss him. I, 
I want to kiss him. She runs back the way she came. Tommy! Tommy turns, hearing a voice. Tommy. Huh? Who? <laughs> oh, shit. Draken pulls Saba free and raises the green chaos crystal used to open portals between worlds. It's glowing with supercharged energy. Do you see, Tommy? I told you. When it matters most, your friends will not be there for you. Tommy! What did you do? Pterodactyl! Kim fires arrows at Draken, who dodges as he charges at her. Get away from him! Oh, little ranger, you have no idea the mistake you're making. Suddenly, a giant burst of light and wind takes over the alley, blinding everyone as Jen, the pink Time Force Ranger, emerges. <laughs> She's sparking with chronal energy, rapid firing her vector weapon at Draken. Who are you? No time! Start firing! The two pink rangers unload on Draken, who's starting to weaken. He holds up his chaos crystal, opening a portal. Home. Where? It's a portal. It's back to his home world. It doesn't matter right now. Tommy! Kim drops to the ground, cradling Tommy's head. So that's what she meant. Tommy! Tommy, it's gonna be okay. Just stay with me. It's okay, Kim. So... Tommy! Stay with me! He, he's not breathing. There's no pulse. Kim turns to Jen, desperate, but Jen isn't looking very good either. Do something! It's too late. He's gone. No. No! Tommy! Tommy, wake up! You have to wake up! She shouts into her communicator. Help! We need help! Tommy, please! Don't be gone! Please! Don't be gone! But Tommy Oliver was indeed gone. And the Rangers... And the rangers barely had time to bury their friend before Jen recovered enough to explain the situation. While the rangers had just suffered a terrible loss, the consequences of what had transpired were far worse than they imagined. Inside the command center, Jen Scotts addresses our rangers for the first time. My name is Jen Scotts. I'm the leader of a unit called the Time Force. You're a power ranger? Yes, one day time travel is going to become possible which means there'll be a need to regulate it. That's where we come in. I was from this world's future, but I'm not sure if that's still the case. Things are a bit broken. My team and I detected a nexus level fracture spreading across dimensions. Our only shot was to take the Time Force Megazord inside the split and try to use the gravity cannons as stabilizers. But there was a surge and I took an emergency transportal device while my partner, Wes, Taught me enough time to use it. To trace the energy signature and travel back to the furthest point possible, to where our scanners say things here began to break. Sorry, you keep saying that things are broken. What exactly does that mean? Jen presents a hologram map. It's a linear timeline with small symbols to denote each era of Power Rangers. This is a timeline of this world that shows all the Ranger teams that follow in your footsteps. Normally, I wouldn't show you something like this, but the situation is dire. There are rangers after us? Oh, yes. Not to get too sentimental, but you guys are the greats. You influence hundreds of future rangers. But now, as you can see, the map has changed. How does that happen? My team and I had a theory that in order to protect itself, the grid had fractured this world. It broke each era into its own sort of pocket universe to protect from paradoxes and casualty. But in doing so, that means it's placing every other universe at risk. Think of the entirety of time and space as existing on a plane of glass. If you crack it, the glass still holds its form. But if the cracks spread and get too big, they start to compromise the overall structure until the whole thing falls apart. I believe this world is just the initial crack. Whatever happens next will lead to the proverbial shatter which is what you and your team saw. Yes. And the energy signature I followed back belongs to whoever that was that killed Tommy Oliver. His name is Lord Draco. He's an older, alternative timeline version of Tommy. It's, it's, it's a long story. You have to try again. What? You're a time traveler, right? You can try again. We can all go back. 
just a few days, when Tommy was still alive. When he was... when we... we can still save him. I'm, s I'm sorry, Kim, but it doesn't work that way. Now that the timeline is broken, I can't go further back. What's happened is in the past. It's locked in place. All we can do is try to stop whatever is coming next. Look, I know you're all grieving, but we have to dig deep. There was a shape inside the Nexus fracture, a being that felt so powerful and has an energy signature that matches this Lord Draken. We have to find him and stop him before he puts all of existence at risk. As if on cue, Jen's words proved prophetic. Draken and his sentries moved across dimensions, conquering ranger teams and stealing their morphers, growing his army even further. And back on his own world, Draken's army scored another victory, capturing the leader of the resistance, that world's Zack Taylor. Inside Draken's fortress, two black sentries speak with a yellow lieutenant. Trust me, Commander, we tried everything. I mean, we worked him over proper. And he said nothing? He's a tough one. One of the toughest I've seen. Of course he is. He's the leader of the coin list. Maybe you just need someone who knows what they're doing. Reveal the red sentry, one of Draken's royal guard. The other sentries immediately defer to him. Leave him to me. You're all dismissed. Sir, sir yes, yes sir. sir. As the red sentry enters, we see Zack, tied to a chair, bruises on his face. He's been worked over. No more minions, huh? They went for the big gun sooner than I thought. So, how exactly is this gonna go? Well, I'm gonna talk a little, and you're gonna listen. <laughs> and when I'm done, you're gonna realize it was worth old Skull breaking his cover. <laughs> but this small victory paled in comparison to Draken's conquests. With each team of rangers he depowered and imprisoned, the strength of his dimension-conquering army grew, and our world's rangers had only gained one new ally, the Red Samurai Ranger, Lauren Sheba. <laughs> we open in the command center as Jen addresses the group. We have a situation. Draken's forces are invading. Where? Everywhere. I don't fully understand what's going on, but we can't let him do this to anyone else. Zordon, we have to get them a warning. Aye, aye, aye. Theoretically, with Jen's transportational technology patched through our teleportation system, we should be able to transmit a signal across the grid. I'm making the necessary adjustments now. To all those who hear these words. <laughs> My name is Zordon of Eltar. I come to you from across the grid with a warning. A great threat is upon us. His name is Lord Draken, and his armies are growing. They have found a way to target rangers with their black dragon cannons designed to disrupt your connection to the Morphin grid. As Lord Draken looks to conquer us all, he is trying to steal Morphers to add to his army of centuries. In this time of great uncertainty, we must stand together and, if possible, come to each other's aid. Defend your worlds, protect yourselves and your morphers at all costs, and may the power protect you all. With the warning out, our rangers began formulating a plan. While Zack, Billy, and Trini went to Draken's world to help rescue Ninjor, Kim and Jen went to round up ranger survivors. Jason and Lauren Sheba then began a journey to the Dome City of Corinth to find Dr. K, who had developed a way to counteract the power warping abilities of Draken's army. Which brings us to... Uh, 
<laughs> Miles outside of Corinth, Jason and Lauren sit side by side in the cockpit of Jason's T-Rex Zord as it stomps through the desert. Finally. So, have you uh, been a ranger for a while? I prepared for it my whole life. Really? It's a bit of a story. Well, we do have 10 miles. <laughs> um, my father was a Red Ranger. He was the only one able to perform a sealing ritual that would lock away the Nightlock leader, Master Sandra. But my father died um, midway through performing it, so the seal wasn't permanent. I grew up training to complete his work. I only joined the other rangers when it was time to perform the ritual again. Did it work? No. <laughs> um, but we were successful in beating Master Zandrin and the Nightlock. For a while, anyway. Um, in the last few weeks, his generals have been threatened, um, threatening, a uh, threatening, ah, uh, threatening a return. Um, mentor Jai and my brother Jaden went uncover, undercover to investigate. And now, thanks to this Lord Draken, I don't know what world they'll return to. Draken certainly has a way of affecting things. You said that. He killed your friend. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sure that's incredibly painful. You're blaming yourself, aren't you? It's kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. We, we don't know for sure what Draken did with the other Samurai Rangers. If they're still alive, we will find them. I know. But I can't allow myself to worry about that right now. We need to focus on the mission at hand. There's too much at stake. <laughs> wow, that's usually what I say. And then I keep worrying. Well, worrying doesn't help them. And it doesn't help us save this Dr. K. So for the time being, I'm going to choose not to. Jason raises an eyebrow. <laughs> Jason raises an eyebrow. He totally doesn't believe her. Hey. I fight demons for a living, literally. Right. <laughs> While Lauren and Jason sought out Dr. K in the city of Corinth, Jen and Kim took the pterodactyl zord between eras in search of ranger survivors. <clears throat> we faded on the pterodactyl, soaring through outer space. Inside the cockpit, Kim and Jen monitor an energy signature. That is, until Jen reaches for her head. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing serious, just a headache. It's expected. You expect headaches? My body's still coming to terms with the temporal paradox of being here. My memories are reconciling. That's a thing? <laughs> kind of feels like jet lag. Oh, God. I'm glad I don't time travel. You get used to it. This is a regular thing for you? Your body and memories adjusting and stuff? Hmm. Yeah. So, if you're feeling the effects of being here, doesn't that mean things can still change? Jen takes a beat. I'm not sure how to break it to Kim. Uh, I know right now you're hoping for a miracle. Anyone would be. But when I told you before that we couldn't go back far enough, that we couldn't save Tommy, that is the truth, Kim. And I'll tell you from personal experience, even when miracles happen, they don't make things exactly the way they were. Time travel is never that clean. When my fiance Alex came back, it didn't just, didn't just fix everything. He was different in little ways. And so was I. We were never the same. I mean, we couldn't be. You can never truly get back what you've lost. If we stop Draken, will that bring your team back? I don't know. But even if it does, you're worried. It'll be Alex all over again. Jen's look says everything. Yes. But before they can talk about it any further, they both look up. An alert sounds. It's a Ranger energy signature. We're close. <laughs> Back in Draken's world, Zach, Trini, and Billy met up with the remaining members of the Resistance, known as the Coinless. Their plan? To break into Draken's tower and rescue a prisoner who could change the course of the war. You may know him as Ninjor. 
Our group, having taken cover near Draken's base, waits for a signal from Skull. Coinless Zack and our Zack are both undercover, dressed as black mastodon sentries. So, we think this will work? I sure hope so. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound very reassuring. Thanks. <laughs> Skull hooked us up with the sentry gear, but the whole thing is pretty risky. He was able to, if he was able to get back inside with his cover intact, we're all good. If not... Then you're running straight into a death trap. Either way, we'll know pretty soon. Behind Coinless Zack, our Zack looks him up and down. Coinless Zack notices. You all right there? Uh, sorry, it's just, uh, weird looking at, you know. Oh, yeah, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I almost forgot to ask. How did everything work out with you? This, did you tell everyone the truth about the, the read offer? Yeah, you were right. See? Alternate future you knows best. <laughs> Glad you could learn from my mistakes. I appreciate you sharing. I'm half tempted to ask you what other life advice you got. Well, I'll tell you. The very idea of you, of me, being able to do something different. We got picked for all this because we had it what it took to stop evil. But I've been fighting a long time. I don't, I don't remember a time that I wasn't. It'd be nice to finally be able to stop. So then, how about we trade Draken down, save your world, and give you a break? That sounds pretty great to plan to me. There's a signal, it's time. All right then, here's putting our face in skull, our faith in the skull. A sentence I never thought I'd hear. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Skull and the two Zacks were successful in rescuing Ninja. However, it did not come without a cost. <laughs> After the assault, Draken's fortress is in disarray. Draken stands with his guards, observing the space. In all our years together, I never thought I would see anything to suggest Skolovich was not 100% committed to your rule, my lord. For him to turn like this, it is such an unfathomable betrayal. Are you sure that's the word you wish to use? My lord? Unfathomable implies incompetence. Is that what you're telling me? That you are incompetent? No, 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 sir. Do you have any idea what happened here? What your hand-picked guard has taken from us? What he's given to our enemies? Oh, wait. Hold on. I know this one. <laughs> Two Mastodon sentries march Skull towards Draken. He's handcuffed and helmetless, bruises everywhere. The key to beating you and finally tearing this whole godforsaken nightmare down? Quiet, traitor! Go! You believe that, don't you? Even now, though it's cost you everything, you truly believe you've done the right thing. You're damn right I do. <laughs> I admire that. The Red Leader and his two sentries turn away, not able to watch, as we hear. Commander Fa, you are relieved of your duty. Take him down below. M my lord! No! Please! Skull's body is dragged away as the Red sentries take the Red Leader into custody. With Draken nearing the end of his quest to break into the Morphin Grid, and the Rangers left with one last chance to make a stand, our heroes had a small moment to catch their breath, leaving a pair of leaders, Commander Kruger of Space Patrol Delta, 
and Zordon to speak their minds. We're inside the command center's pocket dimension, currently configured, as an enormor- ah, currently configured as an enormous warehouse space. It's full of rangers. Some are working with Dr. K to upgrade their morphers. Others are just getting to know each other. On the sidelines, Commander Kruger and Zordon watch as Andros and Caron tearfully reunite. Well, it's nice to get one happy moment out of all of this. Yes. They have been few and far between. I heard this dragon guy. I, I heard who this dragon guy is. And what he did to your sixth ranger. I'm sorry. You've got my sympathy. Empathy, as well. I appreciate your sentiment, Commander Kruger. The experience of loss has been trying. We can show him the path. We can try to set an example. But ultimately, it's up to them. And whether it's losing a team to the bad guys, or the great unknown, we've got to somehow, okay, somehow be okay with that. That as much as we care about him and try to protect him, we really don't have any control over them. No, Commander. We do not. But sometimes, if we're lucky, I believe they learn and grow the most from our mistakes. Hmm. With Ninjor's help, the Rangers planned an attack on Draken's world. Their goal? To tear down his tower, cutting off his sentries from their powers. However, there was still the matter of Draken himself, and for that, the Rangers would need to recruit an unlikely ally. No! No! Inside the Moon Palace, Kruger and Zordon stand before their last hope, Rita Repulsa herself. Well, well, well. (laughs) The great and powerful Sage of Eltar. Seeking my counsel. (laughs) How the times have changed, Zordon. Indeed they have. (laughs) Trust me, this isn't our first choice. Oh, really? Yes. Do turn your snout up at me. In my throne room. A most wise decision, doggy. Finster, what do you have in the way of collars? Maybe a nice choker will help the commander remember his place? (sighs) Go ahead and try it, please. That's enough, Rita. We come before you today because the current threat affects us all. Lord Draken. Yes, yes, I know. (laughs) He's moving through dimensions, conquering rangers. Well, I have to admit, we've had so much fun watching you all scurry about. (laughs) His methods continue to put a massive strain on the grid. If he's not stopped soon, all of existence could end. And? And you are part of existence. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Yawn. You, you, well, you need my help, and yet veiled threats are the best you can muster? And here I held such high hopes for this conversation. If you think I'm scared of a Power Ranger, much less a Power Ranger ending reality, you're even more foolish than I've thought for the last 10,000 years! (laughs) (laughs) Lord Draken's powers are still rooted in your magic. Or at least, the magic of his Rita Repulsa. What does that mean? It means, in his world, he killed you. And then he sent his black dragon sword here. Or did you not know that? 
We have known each other for many years, Rita. I would not be here now if I believed there was another way. For the fate of reality, we need you to do what no one else has been able to accomplish. Rita, we need you to save us all. And with that, the time had come for the ranger's last stand. All that was left was to rally the troops and lead them into battle for the fate of existence. Jason stands on top of the command center, addressing dozens of Power Rangers. We stand on the edge of a great challenge, a challenge that unites us, that brings together familiar faces, total strangers, a challenge that makes fast friends and new beginnings. We have all put aside our lives for a chance to do the right thing. And so we stand here today because we refuse to fail. Because no matter how many soldiers Draken creates, no matter how many powers he steals, he will never have what we do. He will never be a part of what we are. You've all been briefed. You know the plan of attack. Everyone, take a moment and ready yourselves. This is a great challenge, possibly the greatest threat any of us have, has ever faced. But we fight together. Whether we stand or whether we fall, we are the Power Rangers. Power, Power Rangers! Rangers! That was epic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lauren helped me write that. Ooh. Remind <laughs> me to hit you guys up for my next history speech. Hey, uh, before we do this, I wanted to talk to you about something. Lauren thinks, I think sh Lauren thinks I should be on the ground from a morale standpoint, leading the charge. It's the best move, symbolically. Uh, okay. I want you to pilot the Megazord. But it's in Dragonzord battle mode. The pterodactyl isn't even a part of that. I know. Oh. Thank you. Kim takes the dagger and the dragon shield transfers onto her. She hugs Jason. <laughs> the battle for Draken's Tower was long, fierce, and loud, which gave Rita, Zordon, Ninjor, and Commander Kruger the opening they needed to launch a stealth attack against Draken. Deep inside his throne room, Rita ignited the ultimate weapon against a ranger built from her powers the green candle. <laughs> Feeling his energy draining away, Lord Draken left the battle and immediately teleported back to his throne room to confront his attackers. Well, 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 Lord Draken. I'd offer you a seat, but it's occupied. <laughs> You, what, what have you done? Oh, it's nothing that exciting. Just a mystical candle and a little spell or two. I'll give you credit. You've become powerful. Uh, unfortunately, it's all built on a faulty foundation. So, you made a deal with your devil to stop me. You put the fate of existence at risk. You left us with few choices. Uh, yes, about that. As the candle burns out, so too will your powers. But 
I've never been one to wait around. This is not what we agreed to, Rita. Stand down, witch. This isn't how we're handling this. The difference between us, Sage. <laughs> You've never been willing to take the necessary steps to. Suddenly, everyone in the room is electrocuted. <laughs> Down for the counts. <laughs> Finster 5, a version of Finster, augmented with Alpha 5 parts, emerges from the shadows, carrying Lord Zed's staff. Well, now. I've been waiting to that for a long time. <laughs> my lord! My lord! They've wounded you! The candle, it's... It's stripping my powers away. Then we shall just get rid of it! It's no use. I can feel them fading. Come, my lord. I will run tests and... No. The battle continues. We are too close. Take me to the other morphers. But, my lord, they're all from power sets you already have. Any more will be incredibly unstable. Every moment that passes, I grow weaker. I can feel myself being taken further from the grid. It, it will most certainly kill you, my lord. I am giving you an order, Finster Five. My, my lord, please. I care about you too much. Draken pulls Finster Five into a hug. He sighs. Very well. Thank you, my friend, for everything. My, my lord, please do not do this to your. Jeez. Outside the tower, the battle rages. Inside Finster's workshop, Draken attaches dozens of morphers to his power station. He throws a switch. Racked with pain, he begins overloading. He screams as the world burns to white. Can we, can we keep these? <laughs> and if you want to know what happens next, you have to wait two weeks. <laughs> All right, so that is our panel. I want to give a special, special thank you, though, before we leave here to some people that this would not have been possible without of. Uh, Mr. Michael Basudel. Mr. Matthew Groom. My partner in crime on Shattered Grid, Mr. Ryan Parrott. Ron Wasserman. Melissa Flores. Another amazing composer, Mr. Christopher Carter, who brought in all the gear to do the Zordon Voice Live. And last but not least, our incredible cast, and all the amazing artists who helped bring this series to life, as well as my favorite editor in comics, Miss Daphne Plevin. And she absolutely has to stand up. Guys, if you like the Power Rangers comics and Shattered Grid, there is no book without Daphne. Aaron, did you say you wanted to do a quick... You guys, I want to do a quick video, starting at this side of the room and down, just get you guys like saying hi and waving and cheering. Is that cool? Yeah! And thanks, you guys. Okay, ready? All right, make it big. Stand up. Make it big. That's our show. Tomorrow, if you like the comics, we have a boom panel at 12 noon, followed by a really cool after, after party special, the uh, Ranger Danger Boom Room Live, where I'm saying goodbye to Power Rangers. Enjoy your con, and may the power protect you all. Woo! Give it up for
for Kyle Higgins.